Yo, 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 what up guys? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. If you've never built a PC before, you've come to the right place because here we teach you how to build a PC from start to finish, guide you all the way through. By the time you're done watching this video, you will have full confidence to build your very first rig. Today we're gonna be building the first RTX 40 series super build here on the channel. We're gonna be working with the newly released 4070 super and the rest of the 40 super series lineups. We're gonna drop build guides on those too. Those are on the way. Anyways, guys, the budget we're working with here today is 1,600 bucks. If your budget is different, whether it's higher or lower we've done tons of build guides so make sure to check out the past builds here on the channel and you will for sure find the exact price point the exact build that suits your needs but anyways guys this build is gonna look classy and i'm really excited to build it because that reason anyways guys how do we break down the build guides we break them down into three parts first we're gonna go over all the parts and their prices why we picked them second we're then going to go over the build guide complete tutorial from start to finish i don't care if you've never built a pc before you're good i got you and then third the fun part we're gonna frag it up in all current major titles, AAA and eSport titles. It's a benchmarking montage at the end of the build guide. Looking forward to playing on this sexy build. So let's jump into it, guys. First, let's go ahead and go over our card. We went with the PNY NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Super. 600 bucks. Boom, here we go. And here it is, the 4070 Super. Black colorway, guys. Two fans right here. This PNY GeForce. We got a nice little backplate back here. Let's go ahead and take off the protective film and that and this one the video ports it is rocking it gives us three display ports one hdmi and yeah well shout out to pny i picked this card up on amazon all parts used for this build are linked in the video description by the way 600 bucks right at that msrp moving on to what's going to work together with our 4070 super and with that we went with an intel cpu the i5 14600k so yeah new graphics card drop wanted to go with the latest i5 this is a very good option to pair with a 4070 super they're going to work together in games if you're a content creator video editing or streaming this will do the job as well the build a thousand six hundred guys so it's gonna be capable of a lot let's go ahead and go over our motherboard now guys this is a board by asus this is the tough gaming series of boards rocking the z790 chipset this is the plus wi-fi model so it has built-in wi-fi built-in bluetooth which is cool let's open it up again with my blade of of death and we have a Wi-Fi antenna. So get this out if you're gonna use Wi-Fi. How many of you guys use wired, by the way? Cause I, I never use Wi-Fi, I'm always using wired. Do you guys use Wi-Fi with your desktops? Just curious. And then we have the board. Beautiful board off of first glance. This is my first time using this board. Looks like Asus got extra bougie on this one. Got all the nice little aesthetics going on right there. That is a sexy board. Bam, wham, thank you, ma'am. Look at that. Which suits this build, as I mentioned in the beginning. It's cool, classy build here today. We have three M.2 slots right here one right here one right here one right here by m.2 i mean the m.2 ssds guys pop a bunch of storage up in here and then we're gonna get out our m.2 screws for our ssd so for the storage guys we're going with wd blue one terabyte m.2 ssd the sn580 speedy storage at a good price for the ram we're going with something new i typically rock corsair in the builds but this was a better value for the performance this is g skills rip jaws s5 32 gigabyte kit right here which is plenty of ram for gaming of course and it's also great for content creation. We can't forget about the cooler. Should have gone over this after we were done with the processor, but what's cooling our i5 14600K is this beautiful deep cool heatsink. It's pretty beefy. Black colorway. We've used it in the previous build guide. This is the AK500 by Deepcool. I love this cooler. Its performance is great. The price is great and also easy installation guys very smooth which i appreciate as the parts should be right they should be user friendly the juice the caffeine of the build is a power supply by corsair this is the cx 750m this is a semi-modular power supply guys semi-modular means that not all the cables are connected to it so some cables that we don't need we're not even going to hook up which is going to be good for cable management less cable clutter inside of our build and this guy is a bronze rated power supply 80 bucks okay so we arrived at our case now this is a case by Fractal Design, their North case. It comes in two colorways, black and white. <laughs> This PC case is not typical. You haven't really seen anything like this on the market. Just look at this case, guys. Like, come on. I like simple, elegant cases like this. Look at the buttons, too. It's a little attention to detail. Buttons are gold over here. High quality, of course. And there you go. That goes over the ports that it offers. Good amount of ports. Let's take off the two panels. And the back one. Wow. 
Beautiful case, man. All right, so we're gonna put the case down here. So that concludes our list of essential parts for this build. All the parts are linked in the video description. Now we're gonna go over the second list, which is some extras, which is purely for aesthetics of the build. Not necessary, but will make your build look more fly. Funko Pop. We throw Funko Pops in all the builds because it gives it character, gives it heart. Throwing John Wick in there because this is an elegant build, so we need an elegant gentleman in there. John Wick, he's holding a gun. And then we have our brand Crater. This is Crater, guys. This little homie G has built about a billion, trillion, quadrillion gaming PCs. He's an expert PC builder. His KD in every game is high. He's the perfect gentleman. And right here we have custom power supply extension cables in a colorway that's gonna match our build, brown, white, and black. We're also gonna be sticking in our Crater RGB LED strip kit. Let's open it up comes with two RGB LED strips that are super bright and you can customize to any color you want. Strong magnetic attachments and the cables. And it's gonna give a nice splash of light inside your build. Next, we're gonna be using a GPU support. The way this works is, goes under the graphics card like this, when in your PC, so it doesn't sag, holds it nice up and straight. All right, that concludes all our parts, gentlemen and ladies. Now let's get into the build. But first I wanna share that all Crater Tees are currently on sale, all of them. I do want to drop new stuff because these right now that are on the site are more baggy and like streetwear design. I want to try some fitted stuff now and some some essentials, some hoodies or something. If you've already purchased one, appreciate it so much. Thank you guys. Check out creatorhq.com, link in the video description. And for the next couple build guides that are coming out, I'm going to put a coupon code in the description, which is going to discount the tea even more. And that code will be valid for the first 72 hours that the build guide is live. Let's do this. First, we're going to be working with our motherboard and our i5. Get this guy out of its box. So if we take a close look at our i5, we're gonna find an arrow right here and here. It's on the bottom left side. And if we take a look at our CPU socket, we're also gonna find an arrow on the bottom left side right here. So lift the lever to the side and all the way up. Open this up. And now we have to line up the arrows and that is the way our CPU is going to go in. Arrow of the CPU with the arrow of the CPU socket. So hover it over and drop it right into place. It'll look like that, guys. Put this back down like that. Make sure it goes all the way down. So then this, so then that right there will be over it. Put the lever all the way down. You're gonna feel some tension. Don't worry, you're not gonna break anything. And then you tuck it back in and this thing comes right off. Next, we're gonna install the cooling, our deep cool heatsink. Let's get this out of its box. Comes with a screwdriver. We're not gonna use that because we have our own screwdriver. We're not gonna be using everything in this bag. I'll show you what we are gonna use. Okay guys, so inside of here, we have two bags. One of them is for AMD. It's this one. The one that has the black rubber down here on these screws. The one that doesn't have that, the one where all the pieces are just steel, that is the one we're using. Plates look like this. The AMD ones will look different. These are the Intel ones. Then we're gonna get, of course, our thumb screws and our back plate, glass thermal paste. And the heatsink itself, obviously. And now what we're going to do first is we're gonna put the plate through the four points back here like that then I set it down lined up so our back plate is in the back and we have our four points sticking through these are the screws in the intel bag we want to find this one right here we have four of these that we're going to screw into the four points so first one now i'm screwing in the one across these two and the last one now I'm just gonna make sure, tighten the rest. All right, those are good. Now let's take a look at our plates. Notice how the plate has an arrow right there, pointing CPU, as in this needs to be pointing at the CPU. So this one's going to go on the right side, pointing at the CPU, and this plate on the left side with the arrow pointing at the CPU. And they all went in through number one. That's where we need to put the point through. Now let's secure it with the four thumb screws. So here I go, gonna do all four. Now let's get our screwdriver, finish it off. We're gonna keep turning till it stops. So there we go, that stop. So we don't wanna over it, it's the screwdriver. Once the screwdriver stops, then there, you know, it's tight enough. There we go. All right guys, next step is, we're going to apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste in the middle of our i5 processor. I'm gonna do it first and then I'll show you guys a close up, but just a pea-sized amount right in the middle of the CPU. Decent amount of thermal paste in the middle. All right guys, now let's take a look at our heatsink. And first, let's go ahead and take off this fan. So this clip right here, we simply pull it up, releases the fan, same thing on the other side, pull up, and the fan comes off. Okay, now we wanna remove this cover of the heatsink, just like that. Don't forget to take off the protective film on the bottom. 
Now we're ready to secure our heatsink to the motherboard. Right here, there's an opening because the screwdriver goes through here to screw in this screw. Now this opening, we want this on the left side of the motherboard, okay? So here we have our board. We're gonna put down the heatsink with the opening side on the left. So now when I place it down, I'm simply going to line up these two points with these two points on the bracket. So I'm gonna be looking down so I can get it lined up as I'm dropping it down. There we go, I got it on top of the two screws. Now I'm just gonna hold it into place and get my screwdriver. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this this one a little bit i just want it to attach okay now the other one line it up right there and screw it in a bit okay cool so now we have both sides attached now let's go ahead and screw in one side a bit and the other side now so the reason we're doing this is just so we can maintain even pressure as we're screwing it down and now the other one again and i'm gonna go ahead and finish it off now so i'm gonna keep turning till the screwdriver stops all right the screwdriver has stopped and last one just keep screwing till my screwdriver has stopped cool let's put the cover back on top right here now the installation of the fan so let's remove this tie from the cable of the fan all right it's out of the way so i'm gonna have this cable on the bottom and just the same way we took it off is how we put it on attach it on there get this clip back there same thing on the other side clip it back here and there we go the fan is on make sure you have it in this position where it's blowing air from this side and now the last step is to connect the fan of the heatsink right there guys it's gray and it's labeled cpu fan let me plug it in and then show you guys close up see it's right there guys right on top of our heatsink. Now we're going to install our RAM. 32 gigabytes of speedy DDR5. G-Scale Rip Jaws S5. Let's open this up. Installing the RAM is very, very simple of a process. So let's go ahead and look at our RAM slots. Here they are. And what we're gonna wanna do is pull back the lever of the second slot and the fourth slot. Our RAM only goes in one way. So what we're gonna line up is part of the RAM where it's indented with the part on the RAM slot that's not indented. So now put the RAM in the RAM slot lined up correctly. And then once it's in, push down with both thumbs equal force. Our RAM stick is then gonna go all the way in and this lever will lift back up. Now we're gonna do the same for our second stick. Line it up, get it in the slot and then push down both thumbs equal force. And there we go, our DDR5 is installed. Levers clipped back up, looking good, looking good. Next, let's go ahead and go over to this section of our motherboard. Right here is the M.2 slot. This is the heatsink that we need to remove with a zero screwdriver, the smaller one. So we're gonna unscrew this. And this heatsink is huge gonna open up our m.2 all right we got our little guy out so now this little guy is going to go into here so i'm going to stick it in there it should look like that and then we're gonna lay it down on this standoff right there and then we keep it down by then pushing this thing over like this to hold it down into place i will give you guys a closer look see there we go guys i'm gonna undo it though just so you guys can see how it works undo it comes up so i'm gonna put it back down and there we go it secures now we re-secure the heatsink but make sure to remove the protective film on the back M.2 SSD installed. Now we are ready to put our motherboard inside our beautiful case. Let's go ahead and get all the screws from down here. Oh, they're held down by a tie. Gonna cut it. Here it is. This is the box that has all the screws down here. And I'm gonna get that tie out. I don't want this tie to hit something. This is a metal tie and then short something. There we go, got it. That's what was holding this down. Get that out of there. Okay guys, so when installing a motherboard inside a case, you wanna make sure that all the points on our motherboard, these things right here, our motherboard has nine. This is an ATX form factor. So you gotta make sure all those points line up with the motherboard standoffs inside of our case. These things right here, guys. And with our case here, we don't need to remove any standoffs and we don't need to add any standoffs. All the standoffs are already in the ATX layout. So we're ready to to pop our motherboard in there. We'll lay the case down, get our motherboard, and it does have protective film right here on the IO shield. I'm just gonna take that off. And now we're going to lay our motherboard down into the case. I'm going to get the ports of the motherboard lined up back here, like that. And then now I lay the motherboard flat. So yeah, we just drop the motherboard in, we line up the ports in the back of the case right here, and then I line up the middle point with the middle standoff. And there we go, we're good. Now I'm gonna get the screws out. I'm gonna screw in all the points, and then we'll highlight them and go over all the ones we screwed in. All right, guys, so we screwed in one here, here, here here, here, and here. This middle one does not screw in. It just holds the board into place. And then on the top, one here, here, and here. All right, guys, we're doing good. Moving along very fast. Now we're gonna install our power supply inside our system. We have not opened it yet. Power cable, power supply, power supply cables. All right, guys, so we only have to hook up two cables to our power supply. First, we're gonna hook up our PCI Express cable. This powers the graphics card. So one end has two, and that side says PCI on it. The other end is what we're gonna hook up to the power supply. And hook it up right here. It's labeled PCI as well. 
All right, cool. Second cable we're hooking up is labeled CPU. We're gonna hook up a side that doesn't say CPU on it. We're gonna hook it up in here and it's labeled CPU. All right, cool. So now these are the, all the cables we're gonna use from the power supply. First off, here's the big 24 pin power cable. I'm gonna hook up our Crater custom sleeve extension to it. So now instead of this part hooking up to the motherboard, this part's gonna hook up to the motherboard beyond display in the front. It's gonna look super clean. Now let's go over our graphics card. This 40 series RTX 4070 Super is using a different style of plug. So now this is what those cards come with. This came with our graphics card. It's an adapter. So this plugs into the card and then it gives us the two eight pin PCI plugs. But we're not going to use this because, well, it's ugly. We're gonna be using our crater cable, which is the same thing. This is gonna hook up to the graphics card but it's longer and more cleaner. So it is gonna look better in the front of our build. It's gonna be like that instead of this short one having this ugly part all on display, this funky spaghetti mess. So let's go ahead and hook up to the end of the cable, the two PCI plugs. So in goes the first one and let's connect the second one. And there we go. From the power supply, the two PCIs go to the adapter or this, if you choose to pick up on our site, craterhq.com, it's gonna look better. So we're going to be using this. Now we're ready to install our power supply. So let's turn our case around. We're gonna put our power supply into our case with the fan of the power supply facing down. So this case has a different insulation for the power supply. We have to take this off. So let's go back here and unscrew this bracket. All right, now this thing right here is going to go onto our power supply in this position though, guys. So I take it out like this and the fan of the power supply is facing down. That's how we want to screw this in. Now we secure it with the screws that came with the power supply. So that's what we're gonna do with the four screws. We have the bracket installed. Now we're gonna put it inside our case again with the fan facing down. So we're going to get our cables through here. Now the power supply goes in and re-secure it. It's in. Now we're ready to start connecting cables. Now we break down our cables into three groups. We're gonna fly by this real quick. So the first group of cables is all the cables from the power supply, which power things. Our second group of cables is the case cables, which connect the power button, our USB ports and type C ports up here to the motherboard. And then the third group of cables is our fans. Okay, so first group of cables are power cables. We're going to be plugging in the big 24 pin cable. So we want this clip to clip back here. So we're gonna line it up straight and push it until it clips. And there we go, tuck this in, looking great, looking great. Now we're going to move to the top left of our motherboard where we're gonna be hooking up our CPU power cables back here. So first CPU power cable, again, we want the clip right here, the clip on top. So again, I'm gonna line it up straight and then push it in till it clips. And there we go, there's one plugged in and now the second one. So we plugged in a CPU cable to the power supply earlier, guys. One of the CPU cables was then already hooked up to the power supply. In case you guys are like, where'd the other CPU power cable come from? One we hooked up and one was already built in, hooked up to the power supply and we clipped that one in. So it should look like that, guys, nice and clean. I'm gonna flip the case over. Now in the back of the case, we're now moving on to our second group of cables, the case cables. We make sure to remove this tie. We wanna remove all metal ties inside PC cases so they don't touch something and short it. All right, back to the front. First case cable we're hooking up is our USB 3 cable. Notice how it has a hump right here. That hump is going to go on the right side of this. So we want to line it up straight to the USB 3 port and then push it in. There we go. Now on top of our USB 3, we're going to hook up our type C cable. Now this guy only goes in one way. We'll just line it up correctly the way it's going to go in. If one way doesn't go in and it's the other way. And there we go. Plugs in like that. We have our nice speedy type C port connected now. Now we're going to move the bottom left side of our mother board and this is where we're gonna hook up our HD audio cable plugs in right here all the way to the left so the HD audio text of this plug is going to be facing up when we plug it in and that's in should look like that guys now let's slide it over we're now going to be hooking up our JFP1 cables these little cables right here so they are going to plug in right here I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen to help us out we're going to be plugging in our power LED cables first the one with the plus is the positive one and then we have negative ignore these four Four pins right here that is a fan header it's this set of pins so here is the first one right here that is power led positive and power led negative so it's going to be the top first and second pins 
and it should look like that, guys. And right next to these, again on the top row of pins, so now it's one, two, right? The two pins we just plugged in. We're gonna plug it in the power switch into the third and fourth pin, right next to it. This doesn't matter as far as positive and negative goes. Just plug it in however. There we go, guys. To look like that, we are done with JFP1. All right, guys, we're almost done. Final group of cables, the fans. So the two pre-installed fans right here in the front, the cables of it are right here. They look like this. So this is a chain system. You can hook up one of the fans to the other fan, and there you go. They are now chained up. We're now gonna hook up this end to the motherboard, which will then hook up both of the fans. Now, if you wanna add more fans, you can hook it up to the chain. Back to the front of our case. Let's go ahead and find ourselves a fan header right here. We'll use that one. So it only plugs in one way. So we're gonna hook it up to a system fan header down here. And there we go. We now have our two front fans connected to the motherboard. Now, guys, if you wanted to, you could add additional fans to this. You can add two fans up here and one right here. I'll link some fans in the video description. The ones I like to use that have the daisy chain system. We're gonna go ahead and use the system like this, though. So just so you know, the temps of the benchmark is gonna be only with the fans included in the case. So now we're ready to hook up this beautiful RTX 4070 Super. I'm gonna take this off. Okay guys, so our card is going to go into our first PCI slot, but we need to first make room for it by removing the second and third brackets. So I'm putting our graphics card in here. We're just gonna line it up with the PCI slot. And once we have it lined up, push it in. All the way. There we go, guys. It's in. Now we secure it with two screws that were originally holding the brackets that we removed. Looking good. And now we're gonna wire the power cable down here. Plug it into our beauty. Heck yeah. Very nice, very nice. And last, the GPU support. So how that works is this thing is adjustable. Go like that to make it taller. So I'm gonna put it right under the graphics card right here, make it taller. Then I turn this down to then tighten it so then this doesn't move. Make sure that the GPU support is not touching the fans of the GPU. Now that will hold it up. That's it, we're done. Now we're just gonna do the final touches, put in the Funko Pop, put in the RGB LED strip, slap the panels back on, and first boot up. Anyways, guys, if you're following along, congrats. You're done. Cue the time lapse. And we're done. Woohoo! Let's get the lights off and boot it up for the first time. Let's hook up this power cable to this bad boy. And let's do the final peel together. It is time. Turn this guy on. Okay, fans are spinning. Everything is good. Woohoo! Looks sick. Look at this case, man. I love this case. Can't say it enough. I'm gonna go ahead and take the panel off right now. Let me give you guys one more look. Again, there it is. Looks good. All right, guys, well, we're done building this elegant beast. We got it just install Windows 11, the operating system. I made a video on how to install that for free from a USB flash drive. I'll link that video in the video description. Then after we have to install the drivers to make sure everything's running good, I'll link a video on how to do that in the video description as well. All the parts used for this build are linked in the video description. Now time for the fun part. Let's put this guy to the test. Time to frag it up. Settings for Call of Duty Warzone 2. NVIDIA Reflex on OnPlus Boost, 1440p resolution. Here is our quality settings. DLSS is turned on at quality. View, FOV to the max 120. Let's do it. No, I failed. That was my fault. We got, wait, we got second? I thought there were still two more. Anyways, we threw that. We were so close. Performance was really good though, guys. All right, next game. Settings for Fortnite. 1440p resolution, performance mode. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Here we go, baby. Me and Banana Boy about to get the job done. Did he land somewhere else? Where'd he go? Oh, all right. 
Wow, we're at 400 right now. Oh, crap. Yeah, make it rain on us. Wow. What? I'm done. Next game. I'm over it. <laughs> Settings for the finals, 1440p resolution, reflex on on plus boost. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. What up, brothers? They're all deposited the thousand one. Yo, I'm about to deposit 9,000. Cover me. Bro, bro, this guy has 5,000. Chase him down. Help me, I have 11,000. Help your brother. I deposited, bro. We just gained the lead, brother. Good job, man. Good game, good game. That was a close game. Settings for Halo Infinite, 90 FOV, 1440p native resolution. And we have it on the medium graphics quality preset. And here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. King of the Hill on the pit. All right, guys, let's see how Halo Infinite performs. Yeah. 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 watching that, aren't they? Oh my goodness, man. This oh, he's right there. Oh, help me. <laughs> Five. Oh, crap. Oh, wait, did I just get an overshield? Okay, we just need to capture one more hill in this game. And we just got the snipe. So this is looking good. Bring it home. Oh, they're about to get rocket, dude. They're about to get rocket. Ha! Help my brother out! Got him with my, <laughs> got him with my grenade. Oh! <laughs> they're coming for me. They're angry. No, they're not. They ain't scoring anything. I'm here. Fudge! Get in there, guys! Oh, wow. Okay, all right, all right. No more messing around. Get out of here, bro. Sorry, dude. That's not this guy in the face. All right. Halo Infinite Performance. It's good. If you want to hit 240 FPS at 1440p, you have to lower the settings or lower the resolution scale, then you'll be at 240. But the GPU utilization of our 4070 was at 99%. So our i5 14600K came in clutch right there. Settings for Rust 1440p res. Here are the graphics settings. Boom, boom, boom. And let's do it. What up, brother? Hey, hold on, hold on. Before you kill me, before you kill me, hold on, before you do it, I need to say my last words. My last words. Everyone, Bruh. everyone's. <laughs> FPS over 100. Pretty good performance for us. Now, let's just get a few kills here. Boom. Bam. Oh, we're on a three kill streak. He's one shot. Bro, I got shot from some other guy, man. Yeah, you picked the wrong guy to mess with, pal. Hey, how'd you get a gun? Uh oh. Bro, I got a gun. No, I lost the gun. You ready? You ready for a duel? I'm gonna heal myself and then we're gonna duel. We're dueling. Let's obliterate him. Let's obliterate him. You know what, man? At this point, we've been through so much together. I think we need to form an alliance. Kill him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Yo, run back. No. You killed my brother. Ah. <laughs> That's enough. Rush performance is good. It's in the hundreds. All right, guys. PUBG, 1440p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. <laughs> Why would you baby like that, Joey? I remember that. I'm getting shot at from I don't know where. Push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Got him. 
got one. No! <laughs> oh, it's a 3v3, bro? Yo, that guy at uh, yellow's dead, bro. He's cornered. I knocked one down here on orange. Yeah, that's how you do it, boys. <laughs> Settings for Apex Legends, max FOV, 110. He enabled plus boost for NVIDIA Reflex. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Lost by one, dude. Budge! We choked at the end with the knife throw. Almost had it. Alright, Apex performance was amazing. High 200s for the FPS. Next game. Settings for Counter-Strike 2. 1440p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. What up, brothers? Look, if we rush B right now, it's a guaranteed win. Bruh. Never mind, he's on the bottom. Ooh. <laughs> Knock them B Rush. I ran out of ideas. What's next? Plan it. Whatever. I'm going. I'm just rushing. B, right? Bruh. You got in my face. That wasn't my fault. Stop looking at me. Oh, pop a cap in that mofo. Heck yeah, boys. Good job. Woohoo. Bro, what the? F they're mid, they're mid. One's bridge. Yo, 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 tunnel, tunnel. One more tunnel. Bro, I swear I heard him behind me, bro. Oh my god, thank you for not listening to me. Bro, just finish this guy. Thank you. My ops. Let's bring it home, boys. Hey, a shot. Come on. Got me too, right in the face. A freaking tie. Settings for Red Dead Redemption 2. 1440p res. We have reflex off and DLSS is also off. And here are the rest of the settings. The game is at DirectX 12 right there, as you can see. Let's do it. Uh, uh, ah! Get him, get him, uh! Or we're just button mashing. Oh my goodness. Just the sensitivity on this. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, all right, all right, that's enough of that. Oh, right in the jugular. Fudge. Oh, at 99% utilization. Remedy, remedy. Oh. All right, guys, next game. Settings for Rainbow Six Siege. Max of V90, 1440p. Here are the graphics settings. Let's do it. All right, man, we better win this. All right, guys, okay, I just got thrown into this match. for uh, losing by two, but we're about to come back. Oh, diffusers on the stairs. Come pick up your brother. Hi, how are you? Oh, yeah, that's how we do it, boys. It's 
Heck yeah, boys! Oh, dude, come on, man. You gotta win, man. You gotta win this. Come on, come on, come on! Oh my god! Oh, I can't win them all, guys. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap for RTX 4070 Super build. It performed like a beast. Next one is 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super. Turn on bell notifications so you can be alerted when those build guides drop. Thank you guys for all your guys' support and watch until the end. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.